got we got about another minute here there we go perfect all right give me a thumbs up you guys can hear me and see me who's with us tonight we got about another minute we'll get started here who's with us hey miss dawn how are you young lady hey julianne good to see you hello tonda hello amanda hello holly hey bill what's happening valerie up in canada yeah, I heard you guys are getting some snowstorms up there. Oh my gosh, I'm so done with that. Hey, Patricia, how are you? Andrea, what's happening? Carol, hello. Tammy, hello. Robin, Lynn, what's up, Miss Lynn? Hey, Barb. Hey, Carol. Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody on social media as well. Give us a thumbs up if you can see us and hear us. I got a little different camera angle tonight. I apologize. I'm a little whitewashed out. I, I promise uh, I don't have like... Uh, anemia I, I i just got a little sun i look good but all is good we're gonna have some fun tonight look tonight i i want to i want to talk about a few things but i i really want to answer your questions you know doctor is latin for teacher and and you know i know a lot of you have 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 really wanted to you know pick my brain and 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 really just kind of get an idea of what what questions you have about health i really want to get into that that tonight so make sure you put those in the q and a so that um so that we can uh let's see there we go so that we can um answer your questions um we got about 30 seconds and we'll get started hope you guys are doing great man i'm i'm seeing so many great results and so much amazing feedback from all of you uh about you know making changes with your health and a lot of you especially a lot of you doctors that are out there uh that are that are really implementing the nutrition and dna and your practices and 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 really going heavy with the gut protocols which is so powerful and so smart to do we're so ahead of the curve right now i i just want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing please keep doing what you're doing so let's get into to tonight um i've got a couple things that i want to i really want to hit really hard um and really just drive home you know think about this my son is an athlete. I'm just going to use him as an example. You know, a, a, a high quality athlete always focuses on the basic fundamentals of their craft. And we've got to make sure that we understand the basics of health before we can go to the highest level of health. You know, so many people ask me questions about, hey, doc, talk to me about this, this vitamin in relationship to my DNA or, or talk to me a little bit about, you know, what should I do to improve my immune system or what vitamin helps my hair, teeth and nails or, or talk to me about peptides or stem cells. But the reality of it is, is that you got to be able to crawl before you walk, you got to be able to walk before you run, you got to be able to run before you do all these other crazy handstands, backflips and et cetera. You understand what I'm saying. And so if we're not eating well, sleeping well, thinking well, moving well, breathing well, hydrating well, all those things, we're just, we're not going to be well. And I promise you, you're going to ask me, I haven't even opened up the Q&A yet, the questions you're going to ask, you're going to ask me about every symptom and condition that you have or your friends have. And I want you to understand that you got to stop focusing on symptoms, conditions, and end stage diseases. Please somebody remember this or write this down. Most end stage diseases, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, heart disease, cancers, any type of neurodegenerative diseases are caused by adaptive physiology. You have something out of balance on a cellular or a genetic or a chemical level or a neurological level. And that then manifests into bad tissues, bad organs, and then a bad organism. And then you get symptoms, sicknesses, and diseases over here. That's the key. But if you're focused on, will this product help with this? It's not about this. It's about the cause of the problem. It's about the root. It's about the imbalances in the body, that the deficiencies and toxicities we have. At the end of the day, it's all about deficiencies or toxicities. Now, each of us have individual deficiencies and or toxicities. However, um, there are some basic fundamentals that this beautiful body that our creator gave us uh, needs. And I got to tell you, one of them is hydration. I just gave a lecture on this topic the other day. I mean, I gave a one hour lecture on hydration. 
it shouldn't be that hard, right? It should just be drink water and you're fine, right? No, there's so much more to that. Did you know that symptoms on this far right-hand side, symptoms of dehydration can be anything? In fact, there's a book written, uh, I think it's David Brownstein that wrote the book, You're Not Sick, You're Dehydrated. And it talks about every tissue in your body has different types of hydration needs. And every mineral, different minerals pull those, the hydration into your cells. Did you know that if you're dehydrated, it's the number one cause, uh, major cause of fatigue, major cause of headaches, major cause of blood sugar issues, major cause of joint pain, major cause of, of, of uh, dizziness, of ringing in the ears, of skin problems, of you name it. I mean, if, if you're dehydrated, your body doesn't work like it's supposed to. We're made up of, you know, 80 plus percent water. And we have a lot of other things in our body too. And if we don't have the proper hydration, our body's really sick. So one test you can do, I do blood tests all the time. In fact, after 22 years of looking at literally over 50,000 blood labs, that, that 90%, 90% of the people that we look at with their blood are dehydrated. And a lot of those people are drinking water all the time. So here's one test, short of a blood test that you can do for hydration, a urine test you can do as well. Take your hand and put your hand flat like this. You're not gonna be able to see it well because the camera's bad, but take your hand. Now take your skin. And what I want you to do is I want you to pinch your skin. Pull it up like this if you can. Pull your skin up. And then I want you to let it go and watch it. And that skin should rebound down almost immediately. It should be like 1, 1,000, boom, it's flat again. If that skin stays up or if it slowly sinks back down, you're dehydrated. It's called turgor, T-U-R-G-O-R, I believe. But if you do that with your, you're dehydrated. Did you know that you can actually do a scan of your face? And if you have lots of bags under your eyes or if you're really wrinkly, a lot of times that's a sign of dehydration. And you're drinking plenty of water, but you don't have enough minerals. And did you know that like, our, our body, we have a large amount of silica in our body. And silica, um, if you're deficient in that, if your body runs out of, we get it from vegetables. If you are low in, the, in this compound, then you're dehydrated. And if you're low in minerals, you're dehydrated. And did you know that in our environment, we have a lot of aluminum. We have a lot of uh, barium. We have a lot of strontium. In fact, it's sprayed in the air. We have a lot of... Um, we have a lot of glyphosate that's sprayed on our food. We have a lot of chemical toxins in our food supply. We have fluoride and chlorine in our water. By the way, we've been putting fluoride in our water for decades, and we were told it's safe for us. And just this month, the EPA came out and said that there's zero, zero, nada. Round that up, it's still zero. There's zero um, amounts of safe fluoride in your water. Fluoride causes neurodegenerative issues, neuroinflammation. It kills, it kills your gut bacteria, destroys your microbiome, causes the, the um, endocalyx, which is a, 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 an organ system in your body. It's on the outside of all your blood vessels, causes that to fail, can cause hardening of the arteries, which leads to blood pressure and all kinds of stuff. Those chemicals are in our food supply, and they also destroy the minerals and the silica in our body, cilia in our body. and and um, we can't absorb our minerals. So therefore we become dehydrated. And when you're dehydrated, you're sick. What's the first thing that when you go to the hospital for anything, what's the first thing they do to you? I don't care if you got a stubbed toe, runny nose. If you get admitted to the hospital, it's the first thing that you get. What's the first thing that they give you, class? They give you what? They give you a freaking IV. Banana bag. Vitamins minerals, and water. Because you're not sick, you're dehydrated. So I'm going to encourage you to all start making sure that you're hydrated. How do we do that? We need to be drinking living, healthy water. Water by itself is never, ever, ever good to drink. You shouldn't drink tap water, ever. You should drink water that has a filtration system with chloride, pulls chloride and fluorine. Fluoride and chlorine out of the water. Those are poisons. They're the twin poisons that are in your water. 
you should look into investing into some type of a home health uh, system with hotter filtration. I like, I like water that's structured. I like water that has hydrogen infused in it. But even if you don't have that, here's one thing you can do to help yourself. You can start making living water. You can do that by getting water every day, putting a squeeze of lemon in it, put a pinch of either pink Himalayan salt, gray Celtic sea salt, which has a ton of minerals in it. Those minerals are game changers for you. And then you could take a little bit of your, your immune or your, your detox formulas, put that in your water, make that living water, drink that stuff throughout the day. You can drink less volume of water and become more hydrated. But if you're not hydrated, your body's not healthy. I'm also a big fan of sea moss. Sea moss has either sea moss, pink Himalayan salt, and or gray Celtic salt have. Pink Himalayan has about 70, 75 minerals. Gray Celtic has about 80 minerals in it. And most types of good, healthy sea moss has about 90, 90 different minerals in it. So do that and that'll help you. Because all the chemical toxins that we're around every day you're not healthy. It's pulling out the hydration, causing your body to have all these symptoms over here because your cells don't have the health that they're supposed to have. So I would highly encourage you to make sure that you're hydrating effectively every day. That's number one. I really wanted to hit that hard because I don't have any more hair to pull out, at least out of my head. I've got all these people coming to see me from all over the globe. And the first thing that I look at all of them, I go, no wonder you got fill in the blank. You're not hydrated. How can you possibly be healthy? If you just don't have hydration. And then the second thing I want to talk about, then I'm going to open it up to questions because tonight, today is your day. I want you to ask me questions. I see a couple of them in the q and I'm going to get to them, I promise. But the other thing I wanted to share with you is, this is an article. This is uh, out of um, Frontier Magazine. This is Frontier um, Medical Journal. And the title of this article is How the Gut. Now, let me just tell you, I don't like to use the word cure, but this is the article title. The article in Frontier Magazine, the, the, the medical journal, which is also in Nature Magazine, it says, How the Gut Cures and Creates Disease. A new medical frontier. You guys, we have been studying gut microbiomes for over a hundred years. I've been studying this myself for over 20 years. The past 20 years, we've been told by mainstream medicine and the supposed healthcare world that doesn't know jack diddly squat, pardon my French, sorry, I'm a little fired up tonight, about this, that all oh, leaky gut, that's all hooey pooey hocus pocus. Your ass it is. My gosh, these people are so arrogant and they're idiotic. Oh, leaky gut, dysbiosis, dysbacteriosis, what's that? Well, guess what? 2020 came and everything changed because we found out that the number one reason why people had increased massive amounts of symptomatology from certain bugs and infections they got was because they did not have a healthy microbiome. We also found it's in the freaking, it's in one of the publications that I get every day. It's called the American Chiropractor. It's a, it's a, um, one of many magazines that are professional magazines that I subscribe to every month to keep up with what my colleagues are doing. And it says long, long COVID, a holistic approach. I'm going to read that to you in just a minute. But the main thing it talked about in there was lack of normal bacteria in the gut. That's the microbiome. That's your gut bacteria. But here's the thing. You can take all the pre, all the probiotics that you want. If they're not the right kind of probiotics, they're not going to work. And number two, if you don't have prebiotics, which is our cell tides formula, which is fiber that 95% of the American population is deficient in, people don't eat enough green apples, an apple a day keep the doctor away. By the way, the best form of prebiotic that you can find is acai gum fiber, soluble, insoluble fibers that are in the cell tides formula that we recommend for everybody because they're not getting enough fiber in your diet. You have to have that, that soil. The prebiotic is the soil. It's the fertilizer for the soil. It's like, what am I going to plant my seeds in? Into the sand or into the rich soil? 
you have prebiotics, a lot of fiber, uh, a, a lot of good, you know, cell tides and things of that nature, then you're going to have a better chance of growing probiotics. And you should get those from your diet. But most people that eat the standard American diet or, or if they have a lot of antibiotics in their food, which most people do because they eat beef, pork, chicken, et cetera, that's, you know, it's injected into that. And if, and if they take antibiotics or have had antibiotics, that destroys the normal gut bacteria. And remember, we talked about this. We talked about that a normal antibiotic can destroy the gut bacteria by itself for up to eight to 12 months. Uh, something like Cipro can destroy it for up to 24 months, 18 to 24 months. That's one dose. One dose. So back to this medical journal, how the gut can cure and create diseases. Talks in here a lot about how our gut microbiome and cultivating our gut microbiome properly, having a ma ma managed and balanced microbiome, uh, and I quote, cultivating our gut microbiome is to stifle disease. They're talking about how viruses, fungus, bacteria live inside and on our body and are essential for our body's health and function. 45% of your DNA, of your makeup, are bacteria, viruses, funguses, and, and other microbes that we don't even know about. They're in your DNA. They make up you. They, 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 you are what you eat and you are what you eat eats. Gut health is about much more than just basic digestion. That's the thing. When I talk to people about their gut health and I say, hey, you've got, you got leaky gut or dysbiosis, or dysbacteriosis. I don't have bloatiness. I don't have heartburn, indigestion, gas. I don't have any of those. That's not, you assume that because the commercials on television told you that. If your gut's jacked up, you're jacked up. If your gut's leaky, your brain's leaky. If your gut's off because of stress, standard American diet and drugs like antibiotics, you cannot absorb nutrients properly, period. You're going to be malnourished, period. End of story, you can't make certain nutrients. You can't reduce inflammation. Your body can't make hormones proper if the gut's jacked up. Dysbiosis, dysbacteriosis. That's why our triad, our prebiotic, our postbiotic, our, our, our tributyrin, our, our, our biomax with ADK, the triad is a game changer. That's why you hear so many great results from people. If they put that into play and they eat well and they sleep well and they think well and they move well and they breathe well, if you do those things, you'll be healthy, but you will not out supplement a poor diet. Remember, we, what do we say with DNA? Your DNA loads the gun, your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Your DNA loads the gun, your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Back to this story, how the gut cures and creates disease. A new medicine is what the medical world is saying. A new medicine is out. Been out for 100 years. Welcome to the dance, fellas and ladies. The human microbiome is the frontier of modern medicine in which many scientists and researchers expect to find explanations and perhaps treatments for rising numbers of autoimmune diseases as the top human body increasingly turns itself into a healing machine and can reverse lots of inflammation and damage by getting the gastrointestinal tract under control. The composition and changes among the microbiota, which is also the microbiome, have already been associated with diseases that range from gastrointestinal, that's every Pepto-Bismol commercial out there, bloating, gas, dissension, constipation, diarrhea, Every one of those Pepto-Bismol commercials, you got those symptoms because something's off with the microbiome, period. There's no other way it can be. You ask your doctor, why do you have it? They go, I don't know, take these pills. <laughs> so stupid. Gastrointestinal issues, inflammation. Well, if you ask any doctor, doctor, what is the, what is the number one cause of all diseases? Oh, it's inflammation. Where's the inflammation come from? The gut, leaky gut bad bacteria, and metabolic conditions such as diabetes, uh, um, syndrome X, and much, much more. Oh, as well as neurological, cardiovascular, and respiratory diseases. Well, 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 hold on. If cardiovascular issues are from this, why didn't your doctor talk about it? Harvard, listen to this. Last thing I'm going to hit on this. Harvard Medicine 
researchers came out in 2022 and said, if you have a bad microbiome, you have a higher risk of problems of inflammatory diseases, heart attacks and cardiovascular disease, inflammatory diseases, and obesity. So if heart disease goes up, if your bacteria is bad in your gut, why is your cardiologist or general practitioner not telling you that? If inflammatory diseases and metabolic issues like diabetes are, are contributing factors to of not just blood sugar issues, but also bad bacteria, why does your diabetes doctor not tell you that? Or if obesity is a problem and you're trying to lose weight, and if obesity is the number one cause of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, chronic pain, and inflammation, and you go to your doctor and you're, you're overweight, why don't they tell you you should start taking care of your microbiome? Taking the triad, eating fermented foods, having a lot of, of fruits and vegetables in your diet, eating real food. Why don't they tell you those things? Because they don't know. The Bible talks about, and other books talk about this as well, without knowledge, our people will perish. I'm tired of people dying because their dang doctors don't know what's going on. So here we go. Let's answer your questions about every symptom you could possibly think of, because the reality of it is, is we're still focused over here when you need to change that and focus over here. Number one question, here it is. Severe asthma and allergies and sensitivities. How do I start? What do I do? Step one with all healing. Just know that your body can heal. Number two, it's time to clear the clutter. We've got to get the crap out of the diet. We got to remove the glyphosate. So here, do this. Start with this number one. You want to get rid of asthma and allergies and improve your body's function before you add, subtract. Here's what you subtract. Get dairy out of your diet. Pull it out, all of it. Even cheese, dairy. Get dairy out of your diet. Number two, stop eating any type of, um, of gluten. Everything has to be gluten-free for you. Go gluten-free. Just do this for the next 30 days. If you notice a change, do it the rest of your life. No dairy, no gluten. Minimize your sugar intake. Stop drinking juices from concentrate. If you're going to have juice, have it from like real juice. Do that first, number one. Then the gut is the first thing to do. Start on the triad. Start on the triad. If you haven't done so, get your genetics tested and supplement your DNA and stop there. Just stop there and hydrate, but then stop there. I don't want to overwhelm you with a whole list of things to do. Remove those foods from your diet. Add the triad to your diet. Go get your genetics tested. Start supplementing your DNA and then give your body time to heal. It's kind of like when you plant seeds in the ground. You're going to plant the seeds. You're going to water it, give it sunlight, and you got to give it time. It takes a minimum of 90 days to make a change in human physiology. Most of you have been jacked up for months, years, and decades. It's going to take you a little bit to fix it. To regenerate nerves and organs in the body can take 12 to 18 months with some people. I don't really want to wait that long. Well, too bad. That's how it works. So start there. I would totally do that. Number two, what can I do to get more alkaline? Great question. The exact same thing that I just said before. The exact same thing that I just said before. Remove those foods from your diet. Hydrate properly. Triad. DNA test. Support your DNA with new customized nutrition based off of your and balances in your system. And here's a little trick. Add about a third of a teaspoon of organic baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, to water once a day. Easy way to help your alkalinity. I have a feeling my answers to your questions are probably all gonna be the same. Someone says, seasonal allergies, they are. Seasonal allergies are a big deal right now for many, many people. I'm gonna tell you, 22 years I've been in practice, I have not seen fungus and mold as high as I have right now. I will tell you that about two weeks ago, some of you that are my patients that have seen me, I, I have, I was even a little bit croaky. I was a little bit, but I, but you know what I was, you know what I wasn't doing? What I was doing was I was being a human and I let myself not sleep well. I let myself not rest well. I let myself get dehydrated. I wasn't as good with my supplementation as I should be. I was eating too late at night. I was letting myself get too stressed and I wasn't rinsing out my sinuses. So, so help with seasonal allergies. Avoid those foods I told you. Get the, get the dairy out, get the gluten out, get the processed food out, minimize the sugar, get the juice out of your system that's not natural organic juice. Hydrate, 
rinse your sinuses, rinse out your sinuses with a, a, a sinus rinse or, and use silver in the rinse. Put it either up your nose or put a little silver in your rinse and a little silver goes a long way. You got to rinse out all that stuff and blow your nose. Man, I keep my sinus rinse in my, in my shower. I rinse out my sinuses, blow my nose. Eat well, think well, move well, sleep well, you'll be well and give your body time to heal. And by the way, there's something also known as sick house syndrome, sick house syndrome. You should at least once or twice a year get your, uh, your, your air ducts cleaned out, have an air scrubber come through your house, get all the crap out of here. You can even open up your windows and sage out your house, put some good stuff in there to get the bad stuff out. It's a great question. We're seeing a ton of it because fungus and mold is so high, especially in Missouri. We're, we got all these rivers around us. We're literally in the middle of like three or four or five rivers, uh, some real big ones like the Missouri and the Mississippi, and fungus is among us. And that's what most people have sinus issues, allergies is from fungus, not necessarily allergies, it's an allergen to fungus. So great question. All right, what else? Why does it take someone so long to get any results if I ever do anything? You know what? That's a great question. Time and relativity to what? Because see, everybody's body's genetically different. You know, some people are fast metabolizers. Some are slow metabolizers. Some, some are, some people have sensitivities. Like if you have MTHFR, which a lot of people that are slow healers do, they just don't heal fast because there's gluten in their system and it's their cells are still clogged up and it can take up to 18 to 24 months to really get your body detoxed and reset. And if you're not going to the bathroom regularly, if you're constipated, your body's not getting the toxins out, you may need to get a little bit more aggressive with your therapy. Sometimes you need a really big reset, not just weight loss type reset, but like fasting. Doing some intermittent fasting, and then once you get good with it, start fasting for you know prolonged, like the week of Thanksgiving or the week of uh, Easter. I did a five day fast. I didn't eat anything during the day at nighttime. I had a little bone broth, had lots of water. I did get a vitamin IV uh, twice that week to keep my minerals up. I doubled up on my supplements in the evening time, but I fasted, and it really helped me get some clarity and reset my cells. And you know, some other things you can do is challenge your body. Start doing some cold showers. Last minute or two of your shower, do a cold shower. That shocks your body. There's a cold protein that's produced when you do that. Start doing some breathing exercises. Look up diaphragmatic breathing or Wim Hof breathing exercise. Start doing that. Get yourself on a really strict regimented regimen for, do it for seven days. And then once you get to seven days, do it for 14. And then, and then once you get to 14, do it for, do it for 21. Then do it for a, a month. And then have that regimen and see how your body responds regimen and eating the right stuff, taking the right supplements, getting up and exercising in the morning time, intermittent fasting for 18 hours a day or prolonged fasting and taking your vitamins and writing down a, in a journal all the things you're grateful for and having love and appreciation in your life and pray and be thankful. Do that for enough time to break up some patterns. Like if what you're doing isn't working, get more discipline and try that. Change things up. Maybe what you're doing isn't working for you. Do something different. Add more to it or subtract some things from it. I know it's frustrating. Trust me, it is. I've got a lot of these genetic imbalances like a lot of you do as well. And it sucks that I can't have bread and gluten and drink wine when I want and without consequences. And except, But it is what it is. All right. Someone says, been going through tons of testing, trying to find out why I suddenly started having bowel issues. Tested negative for C. diff, SIBO, Crohn's, celiac, gluten. All my labs came back normal. Blood labs are a snapshot in time of where you are right now. It's where you are within really like a like a, a three to six, maybe three to five month period. What's your genetic look like? If you've got MTHFR, you got to get gluten out of your system. Do that. Um, I'm going for a colonic and a biopsy. For microinflammation, I've been on triad since 02 and nutrition for six months. I'm perplexed and exhausted and totally depleted. What would you suggest I do to correct my symptoms? Great question. I suggest you stop focusing on your symptoms, number one, because you're not your symptoms. You're your cellular imbalances, and they're going to dig and dig and dig and dig until they find something that they can treat on you. 
And they might get to a point where they go, look, we don't know what's wrong going on. So we're going to do an experimental round of treatments with you. Here's some antibiotics to see what happens. Here's some IV therapies to see what happens. Here's some, here's some anti-inflammatories. Let's see what happens. When they dig and dig and dig and can't find a problem, that means it's not a, it's not a disease yet. And it's not a tissue problem yet. It's at your cellular level. So get real serious and reset your body. Sit, do a food log for a couple of days and realize what you're eating is probably not best for you. And then, and then get out things. For the next 30 days, avoid uh, dairy. Avoid processed lunch meat. Avoid any kind of fat unless it's healthy fat. Uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, avocados, MCT oils. Those are the only ones. Eggs, have those. Get out of your diet red dyes, avoid juices, go for a walk for 10 minutes every day, try to get eight hours of sleep and hydrate properly. And let's see what happens with that. Give your body a good not 30 days minimum of that. That's what you should stay on your supplements, stay on your protocols, but change your lifestyle a little bit. And, and if you haven't done the DNA test, which sounds like you have, but, but if you've got MTHFR, MTRR, make sure you're avoiding those foods that are destroying you like the plague. That's what you should do. I hope that helps. If it doesn't, come see me and I'll dig deeper. And if you want to try to find a doctor to help you better, get yourself a good functional medicine doctor or try to find a doctor that does applied kinesiology. Those are typically a little bit, my experience, they're typically a little bit um, more skilled, if you will, in diagnostic and finding the cause of the problem. And they have a a wider array of treatments that they can give you. All right. Someone says, what does turmeric do to the body? And what dose should an average 200 pound adult take in what and, and what way? Turmeric's great. Um, man, turmeric's, turmeric's great. It's in our, our, our neutralized product is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. And it has curcumin in it. Curcumin is the extract from turmeric. If you want to do turmeric tea once or twice a day, that's good. Turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. helps clean out the liver. Um, there's a lot, by the way, the liver has a lot to do with a lot of other diseases. And I'm telling you, if you just focused on cleaning up people's livers, that would help you a tremendous amount. But what kind of dose somebody should have, it depends on, well, their lifestyle. The more inflammation and the more stress you have, the more you should try to offset that lifestyle with supplements. That's what supplements do. They supplement your lifestyle. But turmeric is an herb that's used in cooking. And we try to cook with it at least once or twice a week, whether we're, we're, we're you know, using it in our spices. or I, I do a lot of turmeric teas. I don't just typically take turmeric by itself. But um, dose-wise, 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day is a really great dose for turmeric. But start getting a turmeric tea or something. That's really beneficial. What causes a fever of an unknown origin? Let me, see, let me ask that question again. What causes a fever of an unknown origin? Something. Something causes it. It's not just because. So, all right. In, in healthcare, we have this term called iatrogenic. Iatrogenic is a... Um, is a Greek word for unknown cause. A lot of times they're going to say, you have an iatrogenic fever. Oh my God, what is that? What is an iatrogenic fever? That sounds horrible. Oh my gosh, I better WebMD it. Am I going to die tomorrow from my iatrogenic fever? It means unknown origin. I just talked to a gentleman this morning that um, uh, I started him on a parasite protocol and I put him on the triad and his, his night sweats that he was having for 15 years went away in five days because he had a parasite. I put him on a reset diet to get out the dairy, get out the processed lunch meats, get high fat and good fiber in his diet, lots of vegetables, lots of vegetables, eating only organic vegetables for a couple of weeks. Told him to do it the rest of his life, but make sure you do it for the next couple of weeks. And, and his night sweats went away. Something's causing it. The fact that your healthcare provider hasn't found the cause tells me you should find another one that could help you find the cause. But normally, it could be dehydration. It could be lack of sleep. It could be that your body's trying to fight something off. Because remember, what is a fever? Why does the body raise its temperature naturally? The body raises its, temper na uh, its temperature naturally in order to stop viruses from regenerating. 
called proliferation, keeps viral load down. And it raises, it raises temperature to fight off bacteria, parasites, fungus, or something else. So you may have something going on. We may need to do a detox protocol with you. And, and I would put some intermittent fasting in your diet, prolonged fasting. Make sure you're hydrating proper. Avoid those foods we talked about at the beginning of this, of this workshop here. That's what I would start with. Um, I would absolutely start with that. And by the way, questions about what do you do to get rid of parasites? Well, avoid sugar. Avoid, avoid, um, avoid dairy, avoid gluten, avoid, 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 because those foods feed those things. And with parasite cleanses, I use the triad. I use our immune formula. I use all those things. Sometimes I might add a little oregano. I might add some wormwood. I might add a couple things, but it's really more about avoiding foods and, and being really specific on increasing the pH of your body. One thing that could help with that is like I said earlier, start taking a, a half or a third of a teaspoon of organic baking soda, put it in water, stir it up, and drink it down every day. That can help you a lot. Get the body alkaline. When your body's more alkaline, it creates an environment that doesn't, it's not as conducive for inflammation, sicknesses, and diseases, and bacteria to live in. I would try that. If that doesn't help, let me know next week. Someone says, I've been doing uh, allergy injections. Is that harmful or good? No, it depends on what kind of injections you get. Most of them usually are homeopathic. Um, most of them are homeopathic uh, injections. Those are fine. In fact, I've been doing desensitization work with uh, uh, homeopathic injections of, of allergies in people for years, usually about a three-year process. We do that while we clear up the gut, and everything gets better if you do that, typically. Um, Great question. What's the best product to use for parasite cleanse? I just, just kind of went over that. So that's a good place to go. And then uh, the lady said that I, I typically get these, these once a month, these unknown fevers. It could be, if you're getting them around your cycle, it could be uh, a hormonal imbalance, a progesterone or estrogen issue. A lot of times what happens is as women get older, and I'm not assuming anything, but as women get older over the age of 45, a lot of times progesterone levels will start to go down. By the way, when progesterone goes down, it destroys the gut bacteria and causes problems. So we can get progesterone to come up by getting uh, wild yam extract in your body. That's a, one thing you could do. But, but test. Go, go see your doctor and get a, get a blood test for that, and it, 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 can really, it can really help you. Just doing the right things and getting back to the fundamentals and basics of health is a, a really, really beneficial thing for you to do. So. Awesome. Great questions. Give me a thumbs up if you guys, if you guys are learning something here. This has been good so far. All good. Everybody happy? Thumbs up. Sweet. Okay, good. All right. So here's, here's what I want to do. I want to share with you a little bit out of this, um, this um, magazine. What page was that on? Here we go. Long COVID. Long COVID. Listen to this. I want to share this with you. If you have any other questions, put them in there. If not, we'll just have a or uh, uh, early finish to tonight. I've already given you a lot of info. Um, long COVID, the heart, cardiovascular systems, and a holistic approach. This is in Scientific America, sorry, the American Chiropractor, April, 2023. It is a, um, a professional publication uh, that goes out to doctors. I think like 70,000 doctors across America gets this magazine. So they're talking about the dysfunction in the nervous system and the term dysautonomia, which happens after COVID infections uh, of all kinds, SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-2, et cetera. This is in a medical journal, by the way. All you crazy fact checkers, you crackheads on freaking Facebook. Nobody's fact checking the fact checkers. In fact, we are. We found out most of you fact checkers live in your mom's basement, but that's a different conversation. Here's what they found. They found that um, there are many issues that are complicating long COVID the heart and cardiovascular issues, post COVID infection and et cetera, including immune issues, inflammation, multi-organ system failure and et cetera. What are the holistic treatments that are out there that are potential to help people improve their mitochondrial function in their body? Mitochondria, mitochondria, mitochondria. It's a powerful thing. We need to understand this. So here's what they found. Number one, what? Vitamin D, are you kidding me? 10,000 to 15,000 international units a day is recommended for a natural approach. Zinc, 50 to 150 milligrams a day of zinc with a meal. And listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, the gut connection. Addressing the gut is important. 
even when talking about cardiovascular effects, the gut microbiota or the microbiome composition is significantly altered in COVID patients and uh, and the microbiota regulates the microbiota gut brain connection, which if out of balance affects an increase in the sympathetic nervous system. So let me say this again. Hold on. Let's see if this makes sense. You might not be able to see this very well. Let's see what this looks like. No, it looks like crap. Okay. So just think about the brain as having two components. You got a gas pedal and a brake pedal. Your gas pedal is your go, 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 fight or flight response, sympathetic nervous system. You, you, your other part of your brain is your parasympathetic, rest, relax, grow, develop, heal, et cetera. If the gut microbiota is off, the medical journals are all saying that it increases the sympathetic nervous system. When you get an increase in the sympathetic nervous system, you get an increase in fight or flight, increase in adrenal response, and that can lead to imbalances, which can cause symptoms, which can lead to disease. If the vagus nerve is not working properly, the gut and brain don't work, and the cardiovascular system is not going to be regulated properly. The gut is one of COVID's biggest targets. SARS-CoV-2 RNA antigen presents in the gut, mostly in the gut mucosa and in the nervous system. If the gut microbiome gets out of balance, aka not enough good bacteria, too much bad bacteria, it leads to chronic systemic inflammation, causing an inflammatory cytokine storm, which can lead to multi-system organ failure. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not losing my mind. I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. This is exactly what we told the world in 2020. This can lead to um, positional orthostatic POTS, which is sitting to standing dizziness, chronic inflammation, and much, much more. Probiotics help increase vitamin D absorption in the body. And vitamin D is an essential, an essential important aspect of COVID-19. <laughs> Suboptimal levels have been associated with hyperinflammatory cytokine production. Oh my God. So anyway, your gut is really important. It's the moral of the story, okay? Take care of your gut. If you take care of your gut, your body's going to be better taken care of. I hope you guys can appreciate that. And we have the tools. We have the tools to help our people, to help our community. If we don't educate people, if we don't do it, who's going to? Another question, someone says, how often should a 60-minute Epsom salt float be done? As often as you prefer it. I take an Epsom salt soak at least once a week. I have a big bathtub. I fill it up with water. I put about a pound to two pounds of Epsom salt in it. But if you're going to do a total float where you're literally floating in it, I like to do those at least once a month. If I'm super stressed out, I like to do them once a week. Those floats are amazing. Huge fan of those things. All right, I know I gave you guys a lot of information tonight. Any um, any final thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Give me a thumbs up if you guys if you guys have uh, if you're having fun tonight with me. I hope you're. It's been a long, crazy week for me. I've got a whole bunch of work I still got to get done tonight, but I wanted to at least share this common sense, these common sense solutions to very common problems. I want to encourage all of you that you're all doing the right things, taking care of your gut is quintessential for your health. Taking care of your DNA is quintessential for your health, but you've got to think well, move well, breathe well, sleep well, hydrate well, and you will be well, folks. You will absolutely, absolutely be well. I love and appreciate you guys more than you know. I really, truly do. Um, last question. Someone says, great webinar. What do you tell patients when they ask, how do I know if the triad is working? <laughs> do the spit test, number one. Number two, it's kind of like saying, how do I know if water is working? How do I know if food's working? How do I know if air is working? I'm living, I'm breathing. It's, it's important to do that. Um, there are tests that you can do. You can do a blood test. Uh, it's, the blood test is called... Um, Oh my gosh, it'll come to me in a minute. You can do a, a urine sample, look at gut bacteria, stool sample, look at, 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 uh, at bacteria. You can do a, um, the spit test. Zonulin is the blood test that you can do. But what I have my patients do is I do blood work before and I do blood work after to, to compare inflammatory markers, cholesterols, all that stuff. 
they're going to function better. They're going to feel better. They're going to have inches come off their body if they're, but they got to eat well as well. You can't, you're not going to out supplement a lifestyle. And last question I have is what are the most vital, important things to do for Hashimoto, Hashimoto's, okay? Hashimoto's is um, a thyroid issue that's very common. Hashimoto's, the, you're going to find a massive causation correlation with MTHFR and gluten issues. So if you have thyroid issues, period, but especially Hashimoto's, you cannot and should not ever have gluten, number one. Gluten's got to be out. You should also make sure that your liver is working like it's supposed to because the liver has a big effect on the thyroid. You got to make sure your gut's balanced. That is even more than the liver. The gut is the key with thyroid issues. I, I, if you go on YouTube and type in, uh, if you type in uh, Eric Naputi thyroid, there's a really good, um, there's a really good uh, uh, video on there about that. And, um, and that's what you should do. So Hashimoto's. You'd be good. All right, folks. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys more than you know. All right. So next week, uh, we got some more amazing stuff we're going to share with you. you guys. Keep asking me questions. Keep emailing me. We're here to help you guys as much as we can. Love, love, love the fact that you guys, so many of you are really getting it. You're really getting it. You're understanding this. And I just appreciate you because each one needs to teach one. I'm here because I want the ripple effect to happen. I want the ripple effect. My knowledge should be your knowledge and then you share it with other people knowledge is power but it's wisdom is applying it to your life so anything i can do to help simplify and and make this easier and better i will folks have an amazing night go back and watch this all you guys on facebook give us a thumbs up a love and a share share with your friends and family and until we meet again guys i'm dr eric naputi god bless you god bless america and god bless the world stay smart out there everybody and i'll see y'all next week have a blessed night. Bye, everybody.